um, go through the anniversaries. So happy anniversary to you May wedding havers. That was my husband and I too. And thank you for being a member. 33 and Carl nine and everyone in between. Take it away, Louie. Now I will invite Kate up to talk about a lunch and learn. We're so much taller than me. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, real quick moment of your time. Uh, I work for ChildServe. For those of you that don't know, Kate Reynolds, I'm the director at the Ames ChildServe, and we are getting ready for our third launch and learn just is, is just a luncheon that is an opportunity to learn more about child serve in the Ames and Story County communities. What we do, who we serve, um, it's a great opportunity to have lunch and come away a little inspired. So I have flyers that I'm going to pass out to the tables. I was running late, so I didn't get those on the table before uh, lunchtime. So I'll pass those out. You are welcome to um, reach out to me if you have any questions, but we would love to see your faces there. And one more announcement from David Hansen. Yes, given the situation in Ukraine, I requested a two minute pass up here to bring a message of rotary peace work. <clears throat> I know what you're all thinking. Sure, two minutes. I have a special talent. I can speak really fast. All right, start a long one. I'll be able to give a new dollar bill or two. Will you give it a two? Will you give it a 50? 50? All in and all done? Sold your way. <laughs> I won't talk that fast. <clears throat> a Rotary February is our month for peace and conflict resolution, in case you missed it. What did you do as good Rotarians in February? Rotarian has a web page that indicates a commitment to build peace and mitigate conflict and commitment to projects that address structural causes of conflict. Rotary has increased our university peace centers to seven now, located in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, England, Japan, Australia, Sweden, Thailand, and Uganda. We supported more than 1,600 fully funded fellows either for master's programs or for professional training at these centers. One stipulation is you can't attend the center in your country. At the Rotary Convention in, Tur in Toronto several years ago, there was a pre-conference special program on Rotary Peace and Conflict Resolution that I was able to attend. What surprised me was so few from the United States compared to other countries. Also, I note that I don't hear peace mentioned very often in our club. District 6000 has a peace in conflict resolution committee headed up by Ron Heidemann of Indianola. Selden Spencer joined our club last month the main reason that he wanted to join Rotary was because he was so impressed with Rotary's peace efforts. We have one request from the club. If you know there are other members are you are interested in exploring possible Rotary peace activities, please let us know so we can follow up and contact you. Now, last point, I'd urge you when you make your Ukraine donations, to make these out to the Rotary Ukraine Fund. I think we have the right idea with our emphasis 
on humanitarian support. Thanks for the opportunity. Mason, maybe Ron Heideman might be a good speaker for next session. Thank you, David. It looks like we still need three volunteers for this Saturday, the first, um, the first Miracle League games. If you are interested in participating in that and helping volunteer this weekend, I think it's two hours. Two hours, we need three more volunteers. So if you're interested, please reach out to Karen and she will point you in the right direction. Thank you. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker. Greg Probst is a member of the Iowa City Morning and Evening Satellite Club and is a District 6000 Chair for Rotary Youth Exchange and the District's representative for ICC Spain. In addition, he works with a variety of other youth leadership programs, including the Rotary Le Youth Leadership Award, the Students in Cyber Defense Training, Greg and his wife, Edna, have five kids and have hosted four exchange students. Their oldest daughter went to Chile, thanks to Rotary, and is a Rotex in District 6000. Professionally, Greg started his career in software engineering and since has founded several companies and engineering organizations. He is currently a co-owner of a Texas-based telecom company and is an IT business consultant in logistics, healthcare, and telecom industries. Greg has a BS from Purdue from Purdue University and an MS from Ball State University with continued graduate work at Iowa State in information assurance and is currently working on his doctorate at the Purdue Polytechnic Institution. Come on up. Thank you so much for allowing me to interrupt your uh, wonderful meal, by the way. It, what's really good now that I'm going around visiting some of the clubs is I get to evaluate the different singing capabilities and uh, so forth. But it's really great to be here. As uh, was said, I have done some graduate work up here, and uh, but my alma mater is Purdue, and if, you know, Iowa City is kind of a tough place to live when you've gone to two of those schools. And when you include all three of those schools, they all came to Iowa City and got beat one year. So it was a tough time. It's always good to get out of Iowa City a little bit and come up here and to Ames. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about youth exchange and some of the youth programs that we have here in our district. Uh, I think there's going to be a huge opportunity for all of us to participate in all these programs. And I'll kind of talk about each aspect of this. Uh, let's see, I got about 20 minutes, 30 minutes at the most. I could go for an hour. I could go for two. I could live up to the rotary standard. Um, but it's going to be like a fire, you know, a hose. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming at you really quick. And the whole idea is just paint a, a picture of where I want to take youth exchange and our youth programs in, in general and how it's going to all play into rotary in our future. Why did I do this? Why do I spend my time? You know, we're getting ready for district conference. I don't know how many went to district conference. Okay, good. Um, you know, it takes a lot, as many of you know, in Rotary. You, Rotary, look, Rotary can take every hour of your day, right? So, um, but what I do, my daughter went on exchange in Chile, and it was such a great experience. And my Ryla experience began her year at 1.30 in the morning. Dad, I don't want to go here. I want to go home. So my first Ryla experience was with my daughter for about three hours one night. I said, well, you know, if you can't do Ryla, how are you going to go to Chile, right? And that ended that session. So, but anyway, at the end of the day, what I realized about youth exchange and all the wonderful kids that you meet on Youth Exchange, all of our host uh, families and all of the partners that I have to work with in order to make these exchanges successful, it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of people. And, you know, it's all about building relationships. You know, a common phrase you'll hear in Youth Exchange is, 
it's a lot harder to throw bombs across the border when you know the person on the other side. So I really get a lot out of youth exchange for a variety of reasons. Uh, one, you know, all this kind of interacts. That's Emma. She was my first year counselor at uh, Ryla and she worked in Uganda. And one of my host daughters from Italy, now, Iowa State's an engineering school and so is Purdue. So I bleed kind of engineering. Uh, but my host daughter from Italy uh, was at our house one evening and I just got back from Illinois. I had a business trip there and we were just kind of sitting there and, and we were kind of talking. I say, hey, hey L, why don't you take a course in intro to engineering in high school? They, they don't have that there where you are. So she goes, oh, okay. So she did, she took that course. And then that was it. She, we did the graduation, she goes home. You know, you hear from them every once in a while and so forth. And next thing I know, she's working on a degree in engineering. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. And it's renewable energy engineering. So that wasn't your typical civil engineering, electrical engineering, that kind of thing. It's something I never heard of before. And then she goes to Africa and sets up electricity using solar for a community that's never had electricity before. Can you imagine that going someplace and they've never had electricity before? And then that was enough. You get to know these kids that get really, they get going. And she's uh, working on her PhD in Milan. And I just think that's astounding. And that all came from just one single conversation. You know, she obviously did all the heavy lifting, uh, but it was that spark. You know, she wanted to be a photojournalist when she first came to the US. So why do you do youth exchange? Because you have the ability. You, if you were at this conference, you heard about the power one. You hear it occasionally, the power one. And the really cool thing about that is that one person it's gonna affect all these people. It's gonna affect this person. Now she's gonna teach and educate and research. She writes papers I can't read. And that's really amazing. That's something that not just me, it wasn't just because of my conversation, but it was because of all you, our district. We hosted her. We brought her in from Italy. And collectively, we've made a difference, not only in her life, but all the people she's touched in between. So that's why I do it. And hopefully at the end of this, I'll get more of you to help with that process. So where are we now with uh, Youth Exchange? So we have two students this year. Uh, you know, it's kind of a weird thing because when we had the pandemic, we actually had more kids interested in going outbound than we did this year. And I kind of attribute that because they all wanted to leave. They wanted to get out of the house. They were tired of being locked down. They are tired of school. Whatever it might have been, they wanted to leave, right? But this year, we only had two. One's from Des Moines AM, and the other one's from Pella. Notice none of them are from Quad Cities, Iowa City. Well, we'll give Des Moines a little bit of a break. And Ames. And those are some of the largest uh, population centers with the widest demographic than any place else in the state. So we should be doing better in that regard. But the world had one crisis and felt that once it started to lift and go its way, we need to start another one. So we got the whole thing going on with Ukraine. So far that hasn't impacted our exchanges yet. Uh, as we get closer to summer, and depending on how all that unfolds, we'll see if that changes at all. And then we got to get past the FUD factor. This pandemic has, I mean, it's been every which way Tuesday. Some districts don't want to um, host. Some are gung-ho. They didn't really stop. It's a mixed bag. So we got to get past the uncertainty and doubt. I think we're a little bit past the fear now. but. You know, this thing we're going to have to learn to live with. And then because we've essentially lost three years of youth exchange, I've lost three what we call Rotex. Those are alums 
Those are students who come back typically to go to college next and they're around uh, for a while. But the good news is that some of our more established road techs, the ones like my daughter who want to exchange have come back and are helping a lot now, which is really cool. So I'm glad to see that. But it is a challenge because we need more the Rotex because they play an integral part in recruiting and training. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about what makes Rotary Exchange, what makes ours so different than some of the other exchanges. Because if, as you're all going to go out and help recruit, I want to give you some information, right? So the difference is in our exchange programs, considered a cultural exchange. In other programs, they're called academic exchanges. The academic ones are exactly what you think they are. They come here, they're in class, their goal is to learn as much as they can while they're here. But that's not ours. Ours is we want them to go abroad. They'll pick up a language, you know, that's a huge deal, but they're gonna learn how other countries work. They're gonna network with other Rotarians. They're gonna see other communities. They're gonna be more involved in those communities than if they were there just studying. So it's a huge benefit for Rotary. The other thing is we're an all volunteer organization. And that's really great because the other ones, they charge. And not only do they charge, you know, they'll pay the host families, they'll pay for all this and all, well, the kids gonna wind up with a $20,000, $25,000 bill. That's not what we wanna accomplish from Rotary. We wanna try to open this opportunity as many kids as we can. I'd be happy to be busy, you know, with a, a lot more than two. Typically in a given year, we have 15 exchange students, both inbound, what we call coming from abroad, and then those going outbound. I'd love to see us be 20. So another reason I'm doing this is because what is our future? And you can go on the website, and you can find some what other district governors have written when they started and during the course of their year. And, and, and past district governor Powell wrote, the future of Rotary is your near hands. The future of Rotary is yours. Now, I wanna talk about that a little bit because it's a little busy, but hang in there with me on this. If we look at how we want to grow membership, we have to create a conduit for students from when they first engage Rotary all the way through the process to the point that they become Rotarians. And we have to help them along and they don't just show up. You have to engage them. They're not gonna to come to you for the most part, there'll be a one or two who will, but, for the, but it's our job to engage them. And if you look at Rotary Youth Exchange, we make an investment in our students there. We make an investment in our students in Rotaract, in Rotex, Interact, all these opportunities we have to work with our youth. And then somewhere along the line, we lose them. We're not engaged with them anymore. So the question for Rotary is, how are we gonna keep engagement with these youngsters as they become young professionals? And back in Iowa City, I decided, like, hey, let's start a PM club. Let's orient towards young professionals. Let's have sessions and speakers, not about you know, community development, but how's a 401k plan work? These are important to our youth. And so we have to start thinking about what we're going to do to bring them along. Well, two programs that I'm working on now is called NGSC and the other one is called ICC Spain. IC, ICC Spain is relatively new. That involves, that involves five districts from the US and all of Spain. And that whole idea is just, let's just start building relationships. Let's, whether it's through youth exchange, whether it's you come to our district conference, we'll go to yours. It's uh, peace fellowships, all those sort of things that you've heard over the years. And we wanna build that with ICC Spain. The other thing is the new generations. What is that? Well, that's where we create internship opportunities for students 
in their professional majors or trades to come here or to go there and do that trade or take an internship for one to three months. And the great thing about that is if you're an employee or a business owner, you don't have to pay for that internship. So it's a great opportunity for us to start engaging our students as they move further along. That's oriented towards like later in college or maybe in trade school. Once you sort of have figured out what is my major, is it gonna be ag, is it gonna be comp sci, it's gonna be some form of engineering, whatever it is. And so one of the things I'm gonna ask all of you to do is think about where, what we can do for internship opportunities for students coming here. We'll talk a little bit about that a little more. And then I think the other key point of all this is as Rotarians, we need to always be selling. You know, the old vernacular, always be closing, ABC of sales, same thing here. We need to always be closing 24 by seven with our, our, our youth and trying to get them engaged in rotary. So what do you need to start? Well, you need your club president, you need a youth exchange officer, you need some local counselors, and basically I'll talk about that one a little more, and then all you, the club. You're all involved, whether it's you're talking to schools, whether it's you're talking to some le community leader who has influence in the schools, maybe you know teachers, maybe you know, it's all of you engaged. But at the capstone of it all is the, is the local counselors. They work with your students. So if you have a student who wants to go outbound, they're showing them rotary. And I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. It's important. The one word that's missing in a lot of these programs is the R. We hear youth exchange, we hear RILA, we hear them all in their you know, acronym of the day flavor, but we've lost the word rotary. And we used to teach our youth exchange students what Rotary was in a half an hour component within training. And it always had Paul Harris went to law school at the University of Iowa and so forth. That's all great, that's fine and good, that's a good thing to know, but what does your club do in District 6000? What do you do in Ames? What do you do in, in Knoxville? Now I go to Knoxville, there's a big old track over there. I'm from Indiana. You know, the big Indy 500 is where I hung out at. And I'm walking in Knoxville, I go, where did this place come from? I didn't know there were dirt tracks out here. And so, I mean, it's like that kind of thing where you're going overseas, you actually can speak intelligently about what your community is doing, what your state is doing, what your country is doing, what you are doing. So Rotary really plays a big role, in, but the counselor is the one who has to get them to the meeting, say, hey, this is going on. They're the ones who continuously engage with the student community. So really at the end of the day, this isn't hard. You just need a structure. Find somebody who's gonna be a youth protection officer. Find somebody who's gonna be the counselor and then the rest of you just participate, help recruit. So it's, a and, and, the, and the most important part I want you all to know is that our youth exchange team is here to help you. That life preserver is there for a reason. Yeah, you're not going to know all the answers. You're not going to know all the questions. You're not going to know what to expect. You're not going to know when that kid comes home and says, hey, I got a problem with this. Some, you're going to need to reach out sometimes. And that's what our youth uh, exchange team is there for. So basically, the life cycle is this. Recruit, 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 recruit. No, I don't want to be like the army, right? But it's a 24 by seven deal. You always got to be recruiting. In a lot of clubs and a lot of youth exchanges, they start recruiting about midsummer. Well, there's no kids in the summer. Then fall gets there and everybody's trying to get everything done to fall. Well, the kids are busy. They got football on Fridays. They got all kinds of things going on. And so we need to be in there repetitively involved in the process. So it's not a foreign th concept to them. So maybe start in junior high, maybe you're talking about it in junior high. There's all kinds of things, but recruiting is a key component that has to happen all the time. And then if students interested, then help them through the outbound application process. It is huge. They have to write about why they wanna go. They have to get health 
Um, they have to go to the doctor. They have to get all the health measurements and all that sort of thing done. They have to provide transcripts. They have to get references. It's a big deal to do the uh, application because that's what we're going to share with our partners. That's what they're going to read about the person who's saying, hey, I want to go to the exchange in, in this country. So they need a lot of help on that because it's their first time through it. And we want to make sure that they get through it all right. And then you guys are going to interview them. Hey, is this person somebody that this club wants to support and send on exchange? Is this person going to come to our Rotary events? Is this person somebody we believe in and are willing to make the investment? You know, past District Governor Herb Wilson always taught me a lot of things, but one of the things he used to do is point at me and say, everything I, you know, when I make a donation or a contribution, I always want to know what the return on investment is. True business thinking, right? Same thing here. Is this student something, someone that we want to make an investment in? Then, of course, we're going to interview that person because we want to make sure these are great relationships we have with our partners. They trust us. When that pandemic hit, that was great. The only, the only uh, information source I could rely on was our rotary network. I couldn't rely on what I was hearing from state. Definitely couldn't rely on what I heard on the news. I mean, it, it was our rotary network. And when we had to get 15 kids back home and 15 kids back to their country, we had to rely on a rotary network. And I'll tell you what, it's, I burned a lot of hours. Paul Kalanoff and I, we burned a lot of hours on getting our kids home, but it was made a lot easier because of the training our students had. They knew that they, they didn't know what to do. I mean, who was gonna train for a pandemic? I didn't have any idea one of those was gonna come along, but they had all the tools and the resources and their, uh, the, to deal with the situation. And our families were great too, because they get trained as well. We didn't have any jumping out basement windows and all this sort of thing. No, our goal was getting every one of our kids back safely. And it was our rotary network that allowed us to do that. We didn't jump and say, okay, throw everybody on a plane and get them home. We knew what was happening. Every plane load was full of COVID. So, you know, we took the safe practical route and we used our, some kids came home a little earlier, some came a little late. It all depended on the situation, but rotary was the foundation that made it all work. You all ought to be proud of that. Of course, then we place the student. We decide where are they going to go. The other country says, yeah, this person looks like a good fit and these sort of things. And then we place them. And then, of course, the training goes on and on and on. We are training them. Training never stops. Even when they're on exchange, I want to know what you're doing. I want to know if you change host families. I want to know if you got a problem these sort of things. And so the training continues, so to speak. And then that isn't a mistake, that is Air Force One because these students are our ambassadors. They represent Rotary, they represent Iowa. The, they, they do, they're, they're gonna do a better job of representing who we are than everybody within the Beltway in DC. I mean, hands down, these, these kids are gonna be the ones who help pave the way for peace down the road. It's certainly not gonna be those in DC. Of course, youth exchange isn't always a rose. And uh, to quote a horrible song, every rose has a thorn or two or three. Um, you kids have emotions. I mean, these are teenagers, okay? I have, I've had five plus exchanges. I know what teenagers are like. Sometimes I still act one myself, but they go through all these emotions. When they're away for the first time, they've been gone. Think of it for, for a minute. If you were gone from your family, say starting in August and you're in, in, in it's holiday time and you're feeling down, but you're not going to get on a plane and come home, you're dealing with all kinds of flavors of uh, culture shock. You know, new country, new language, new cultures, new friends, these sort of things. So that, I mean, it's a big deal. And guess what? When they come home, they get reverse culture shock. They just spent all this time in another country and now they're back home. And by the way, 
mom and dad are expecting you to act one way like you did when you were there, but no way. These kids mature like you wouldn't believe. There, there's a level of maturity that they reach that is unbelievable. And you have to see it to believe it. And then, you know, they're teenagers. You're going to do teenage things. So is it a, always a rosy moment? No, but it's a very rewarding one. But for the most part, they're all good kids. We, we rarely have an issue with them. And then, like I said, training, we train the families, we train the students, we train the Rotary Clubs, which would be all you. And um, in our own team, the youth exchange team, continuously looks at training, how can we do things better, and these sort of things. I'm gonna skip this, but there's a lot of people that are on the youth exchange team, including uh, Steve Dakin and Wayne Steen, who are here wearing the Ryla shirts. But we have a whole slew of people who are back behind this program, and many of those are names you recognize. Loring Miller says he's been in this program since dirt. I don't know when that was invented, but but uh, all those folks, and a lot of them are past district governors too. And then, like I said earlier, you have to know Rotary to live it. I mean, you have to, you, in order to talk about Rotary, I mean, it's not a half an hour lecture. What, what do we do, you know? And every club has something different. We, our district does something different. You do something different, but collectively we do a lot of good in the world. And it's important that our students, when they go on exchange, know this. Like I said, club support is really important. Youth exchange you know, starts at the grassroots, literally. I mean, it starts at the club. We're not gonna see students unless you're getting students. And I can't come to Ames and go to the high school and all that as much as I'd like to see cloning come along. I don't think others would wanna see me clone, but you know, we can only go to so many, so many meetings. But you guys are the, the force on the ground to help. Uh, finding host families is probably the number one issue that I hear about. Okay. So finding a host family is back to that recruiting thing. And once you start bringing students into your community, then it start grows with some momentum. Other people see it. They start asking about it. Having your own students going outbound, always talking about, well, I'm going to go to Spain next year, or I'm going to go to Italy next year, is all sales and marketing. It all gets back out to the, to the families. Host families do not have to be Rotarian families. So, it, so they could be other families in, in your community. What a wonderful recruiting component for your club. If you could get a student a host family to host a student and they go through a rotary and they start seeing rotary, they go to some of the events. It might be a huge opportunity for you to grow your club. And then the financial part, which everybody wants to know about, uh, it's very little to the club. But I will say it overall in, in this regard that the cost of not supporting youth exchange in our youth programs in the long run is going to cost rotary more than not. Again, it's back to investing in our future. And of course, you know, the one thing, the fee that this club would have to pay for an outbound student is the 450 for the RILA. For an inbound student, if you're gonna host them, it's lunch at school, it's a phone to use, a stipend, but the most of the bulk of the financial lifts could be on the host family, who's gonna close, or not close, but, We'll um, put a roof over their head and feed them and take them on vacations if they want to go on vacations, these sort of things. So the entertainment's kind of a blur depending on the host family and the student. So the next steps, again, there's that word recruit again. Create your team. First of all, decide you're gonna do it. That's, that's the number one decision you gotta make. Are we gonna do it or not? And you know, figure out what your team is, and then all kind of goes from there. Finding host families, recruiting, so forth. This is a picture from Ryla. And the reason why I like this picture is because one of the things that we do in Ryla is we teach our future leaders, who a lot of them are high achievers, 
to ask for help. It's a very critical skill that you learn if you're going to lead because you can't do it all. And delegating is sometimes one of the hardest things for many leaders to do. But at the end of the day, asking for help is a good thing. These students don't know it, but there's no end to that rope. But they're going to try for the next 45 minutes to find it. And eventually, they quit. They, they raise their hand and say, I, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> and then you take them aside, and then they take their little, um, the, 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 what do we call it, off their head. And then they look and they, they start laughing because they couldn't believe that that was what was played on. Now, by the way, you aren't supposed to share this with any future Riley students. This is supposed to be a surprise for them. The other uh, part of this I want to mention is, see that number 26.2? Anybody know what that number is? Yeah, four years, may have been five years ago, uh, a Ryla leader texted me in the middle of nowhere, says, why don't you do Chicago? Now, this is a big thing in Iowa City with the Dance Marathon, the big fundraiser for the pediatrics uh, cancer unit at uh, Stead, High, uh, Stead Hospital, okay? Uh, if I would have told you six years ago that I was gonna run a marathon, or I, I would have laughed, it's like, are you kidding me? I ran my first marathon five years ago. I've run Chicago twice, another one, so it's a total three and a half, another half marathon. Anyway, the point is, is that I knew that was gonna be hard. It's hard. <laughs> you don't, yeah, you can stop and walk a while and get a drink, you know, out of the water thing and, and all that sort of thing. And they do a great job in Chicago running that marathon. I mean, I, I, how I made it, I'll never know. The reason why I bring this up, and this is sort of the mantra of a lot of things I talk about, is that it's hard. You have to keep going. You have to keep on working at it. You have to keep moving. It's going to hurt. You're going to bang your knee. You're going to say, why did I even do this? You're going to think all these things when you try to recruit students and host families and try to get your program going. It's going to be not easy. But you'll accomplish it. You'll get there and you'll cross that line and then you'll get that beer. And you'll sit there and go, man, can't believe I did that. Now, where's the ice? So it is really important that I, I share that moment with you because it's a great analogy for how, how it can be. So what help I need from all you? I need your buy-in and your commitment from your club and you. Okay, that's what I'm here asking for you to do. I, I, yes, okay, and all I see, I got out of Iowa City, which is always a good thing when you get to go up to Ames or West Lafayette. Um, but I really need your club. That's where it all starts. Once we start with the commitment and the buy-in, then it all moves from there, okay? The other thing is I need some, what I call in order to grow the new generations, I need to start thinking of businesses. You are, look, Rotary is about networking, right? Yeah, we do service projects, but that's roots about networking. Network and let me know if you've got any kind of cool intern options for students for one to three months, maybe in the summer, okay? I need to start finding those and finding those communities that will be willing to host those students. So start small, don't try to boil the ocean, as they say, you know, I, I think if you can go full board, that's great, but don't be, you know, like I said, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take steps, it's gonna take training, it's gonna recruit. And I think the one thing I just heard this year today, I thought it was kind of a cool thing, but think of it this way. You're starting to plant trees that are going to produce shade that you're never going to get to sit in. And that's one way you can look at youth exchange and all of our youth programs. So yeah, I'm here for youth exchange, but I'm here for growing our, me our membership too. So with all that, I don't think I have anything else. It's my contact information, always here to help. And I think we have Wayne too, who I think would like to say something about Ryla, but I can take any kinds of questions or whatnot.
First of all, thanks for being here. As some of you know, I was a former district governor in the north half of Iowa, but I'm also enjoying my time here in this district and working with some other clubs. What you may not know is both my sons were Rotary Youth Exchange students. Now we all in this community worry about quality of education, where our kids are gonna to go to school. Well, my sons both took the year after high school before they started college to go overseas one in the Netherlands and one in, in Belgium. And they told me it was better than any, it was more fulfilling and more rewarding than any year of college they ever had. Now, we appreciate education. We need to get our arms together and figure out how to do a Rotary Youth Exchange program. It will benefit every community. It will benefit every student that goes, but it'll benefit their classmates because they'll share. Now, I would correct you on one thing. One of the hardest things to do is convince their parents that they should go. And I can tell you that from experience, but it can be done. And I really appreciate the connection to Ryla. I appreciate the connection for the internship. So these are really expansions of a, of a really great program. It beats, every, it beats every exchange program in the world. And I say that from experience. Thanks for being here. It's sort of funny because uh, with my daughter, I will tell you that when she went on exchange and she came back, she spoke Spanish so well because the dialect is so much different in Chile, faster, incomplete sentences and that sort of thing, that when she she's now a critical care paramedic in the Quad Cities. And that's a huge benefit if you think about that to speak bilingual in that kind of situation. And, and to your point about, yes, it is hard to convince host families or, a student or the parents. For me, it was less convincing. My most emotional day was the day that Aaron left. And then that was my least emotional after that. And then and it took over. So, yeah, I appreciate that. That is true, though. You have to, especially today, where, where you have pandemic and so forth. Yeah. Do you... Uh, spend a few minutes and give us a uh, Rotary Youth Exchange 101. Uh, let's see. How much time do you have? Um, again, I think that uh, one of the things that we need to do as a district, and I've already started on this path, is create a more outgoing, you know, like a website presence where we can learn more about that and share more material. It's, it hasn't been done in a while, but I think that, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to boil that down right now. But what I can tell you is, you know, let's start off with just getting the interest going. If, and like I said earlier, it's a cultural exchange. And, you know, it's for the academic year. So typically it's August through May. And there's no going home in between. There's here the whole time. And they typically have about, we aim for two to three host families. And the reason why is because each host family is a different experience, right? So you might go here, it's one way. You might go to this family, it's a different way. So it's a good way for a student to get a wider perspective of the community and the culture that they're in. Uh, other than that, they go to school, just like the students. And, you know, there's a lot of tidbits out there. For example, um, I tell every host family that brings, that receives a student, the first host family, send them to cross country. And the reason why is because cross country is one of those, it's, you don't have to make the team all the time. You just run, you, you meet some wonderful students. It gets you engaged right away. You're not, and, and they want to help. Cross country is like one of the best programs that a student, they'll say, oh, I don't run, I don't wanna run. You say, no, you go do cross country anyway. And they turn out liking it. So that's always good too. Is there still a summer exchange program. Both of my daughters participated in that where we got a student and then my daughter would go to that family. Right. That's a really good question because that comes up often about the short-term versus long-term exchanges. 
In our district, we're focused on the long-term exchange. And the reason why that is, is because, first of all, it takes the same amount of time for a short-term or long-term exchange in terms of training, the application, and all these sort of things. But most importantly, is that they get in this country and it takes them about three months, four months before they are starting to really ramp up and get engaged, right? So when that occurs, you don't want them bring them home. You want them to now leverage that and build upon that experience for the next four months. So we really are in the district, we're really believers in the long-term experience because that's what really molds the student or as, as part of youth exchange. We have talked off and on about short-term exchanges. Um, and some of the programs you mentioned are kind of called camps. And so we've, we're aware of those. We just don't do much with those right now. Uh, and then I think the other thing I might note along those lines is that, the, you know, it's a cultural exchange. We're really trying to get them immersed in the culture. So when they come back, but when they spend that long of time there, this is some, so in your little book of notes, when you're trying to recruit, most of these students, if they're going to go on to college, will test out at about six semesters of foreign language. In today's dollars, that's pretty significant. And especially when you consider the cost of saying on exchange, it's almost a wash and a wash in terms of cash, but the amount of experience and the, 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 what they come back with the, the cultural awareness is just astounding. My whole table told me I didn't tell you what my daughter's name is, our daughter's name is, and it's Jennifer Renderneck, Jennifer Bloom Renderneck. Uh, but the second thing is, this is just a kind of a little story with an exchange student. Um, the year after Dell was district governor, we were just traveling around and we were in Albany, Georgia. And so we went to the Rotary Club there. And so they were having this big crisis. They had this student from Italy over here and he wasn't supposed to be in Albany, Georgia. And so they're saying to Dell, you're district governor, so figure out what should we do. And so he said, well, what I would do is call Albany, the Rotary Club in Albany, New York, where I think this student was supposed to go and see what they want to do and what kind of exchange they can make and help you out with your club to get this student up there. So things are always interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, a guy that I know from Mexico who started a uh, Mexican restaurant in Indianapolis. He got off the bus in Indianapolis that was going to Minneapolis is where he was going. So yes, you, you, you do have those opportunities for uh, humor. There, there's one thing I want to also mention uh, about the 101 thing and building your team is um, a couple of years ago, I was really pushing to make sure that our youth protection policies were in place in our district. And I know there's a lot, a lot of concern, like why do we have to do this and all this sort of thing. It's really important that if you're going to be engaged with our youth, that you just go ahead and do youth background check and the references. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's not very much money and it puts everybody in the right position when we go. And let me give you an example. Okay, you might be in an event, you have a student with you, okay? And then that student doesn't have that ride home and there's only one of you. And you didn't take the youth protection background check. That puts everybody in a level of not so good, okay? So just go ahead, if you're gonna be interested in dealing with youth, just, I would suggest just go ahead and do that part. It's easy, just get out of the way and it makes everybody, it protects the student, but it also protects Rotary too. Most importantly, the student. Oh, yeah, so I'm going to, uh, Wayne, would you like to come up and say a few minutes about Ryle or come up down here? I don't care. Podium's kind of ominous. Uh, 
Ah, no sé. A few years ago, we had Cam. He was a track star here at Ames. He was a fantastic uh, Rylarian. We call our conferees Rylarians. This year, we're going to be back at Grinnell College. Uh, we had to take a year off back in 2020. And then last year we were at Co, which was wonderful, but Grinnell is just a, a better place, better fit for Ryla. Uh, it'll be July 17th through the 22nd this year. And uh, it was a great experience for Cam. He didn't know whether he was gonna come because he had just had a death in the family, but he was so glad that he came to Ryla. And Ryla is also, we have Lisa Trong, and Park knows Lisa and Steve and Greg. Lisa uh, was a Rotary ex Youth Exchange student. She has restarted Rotaract in Iowa City. I don't know if you have Rotaract here in Ames, but these are the kinds of people that we need to bring to Ryla and Ruth Rotary Youth Exchange because they're the ones who are gonna build. You know, it, it's, we've got to, look at Rotary, we're down in the district in numbers. Uh, we've got to get the young people involved. And this is a really, really crucial time for us because there are so many students who are struggling right now. They, they have been out of school. Some people need the structure. And RILA is a way that they can meet other people from other parts of the state. We work together with District 5970, which is the district north of us. We have two outstanding um, people this year. Um, Ellie Wilson from Ankeny, who goes to Luther College, and Jojo Hayes from Cedar Rapids, who goes to Milderberry College. Uh, we have people who have gone to Brown, Stanford as our team leaders, as a Rotarian, and it's a great opportunity if you want to make a difference in a person's life for a week, you can talk to Steve and Park and Greg about it. It makes a difference. I had a student who was really having a very difficult time. And I won't go into all of her situation, but she was thinking about quitting school. She was uh, going to be a senior in high school. And the team leader and I had some discussions with her. And she's got her life back together again. She credits Ryla for that. And she's starting her master's degree in social work at the University of Iowa. She says, I want to give back. That's what Rotary is all about. We can make a difference. As Greg said, in a person's, one person's life, you can make a difference. Ryla can make a difference. Rotary Youth Exchange can make a difference. Rotaract can make a difference. Interact, which is the high school group, can make a difference. I have seen people who were just going to give up on life. And being at Ryla has changed their lives. They are now enthusiastic and optimistic about their future. You can make a difference in a young person's life. And that's why I do Ryla. And that's why I go to clubs all over. Steve, I know, is very passionate about it as well. Park is. We have seen that you can make a difference in a person's life. And when you choose people for Ryla, it doesn't necessarily have to be the four point captain of the football team or captain of the cheerleaders. Think about a person that that week may make a difference in their life. Someone who really needs some self-esteem, some self-confidence and can make a difference in that person's life because I've seen it many, many times where the difference of that week and they believing in themselves, and maybe it takes them to get out of that click in their high school, finding other people that can, they can be with. Um, I, have, I have teams that were part of six, seven years ago, and they're still in contact with one another. They still do Christmas parties or Thanksgiving together. So it's a lifelong um, friendship that they develop. And a lot of them are in tough situations. I, I know one person was um, in an abusive situation and I just told him, you know, 
get through your senior year, get out of the state, go somewhere. You don't have to go one of the coasts. And he recently wrote to me and he said, thank you for that advice. I made it through my senior year. It was not Ames. I uh, made it through my senior year. And now he's going to school in Ohio. And he says, I'm for the first time in my life happy. That's the difference you can make when you're involved in Rotary Youth programs. So please think about it. And for those who are not here, share this presentation with them because that person may need you to change their life. I'll just add one of those counselors this year is Jojo, who is one of my first year conferees. Um, how many of you own businesses or management or, you know, leaders within your own company or, or is everybody retired? No. One of the things I get out of Rotary or Youth Exchange is that you learn what's making a lot of these youth tick. And that's a huge benefit uh, when you're trying to lead them to understand how they see the world. And, you know, you can tell them a lot of the same things that you know their parents are telling them, but they're going to listen to you because you're not the parent. So there's a lot of, if you've never done youth exchange before or youth um, Rila before, I would, I'd really consider it as a Rotarian. It's a wonderful experience. Well, I have all right. Well, thank you for your time. Unless there's any more questions, I think I, it's time to go. So uh, thanks, everybody, for your time. And I uh, hope to hear from you all very soon. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much, Greg. We are the lead sponsor for Raising Readers here in Story County. So we would love for you to autograph a book um, and it will be presented to a two-year-old at their Well Baby Check. So thank you so much for your time today. Let's go ahead and stand for the four-way test. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Four.